A new report outlines that the American Dragon Brian Danielson is currently dealing with injuries with many fans believing that the encounter with Swerve Strickland at the main event of All In for the AEW World Championship could be in doubt. We're going to talk about the report, what the truth of the matter is, and everything we know about the situation right here in this video. We're also going to get into an AEW star who returned to the company, find out who that is. It's a pretty big name that a lot of wrestling fans are familiar with, what they could be doing when they are back. All that much more coming up right here, youtube.com forward slash Real Take Wrestling. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever a new video is released. All right, let's talk about the report of Brian Danielson. Brian, of course, earlier last week had said in an interview with Renee Paquette on AEW's YouTube channel that his contract expires with the company as a talent on August 1st, causing many people to kind of wonder, well, what, what's going on here? Or is, are we going to get this match? It's, like, it's literally a few days from now. They don't even have dynamite. Like, like what's going on? What is the deal with the American Dragon, Brian Danielson? Well, we have, we have now learned, excuse me, according to FightfulSelect.com, here is an excerpt from the report, update on Brian uh, Danielson's physical status. AEW sources confirmed to us that Danielson was beat up as one, ex as one would expect. However, the plan has long been to get him to the main event of AEW All In. Altogether, they prevented him from participating in some things that were originally planned along the way. Danielson's talent contract is up on August 1st, as he stated, but there's an active plan for him to continue with the company for numerous dates past that, including All In. However, last we heard, it is still expected that he will only remain a part-time in-ring wrestler if at all, after his current run in AEW ends, as one would expect, Danielson is well, uh, excuse me, well liked as a talent contributor to creative and a backstage presence. And you know, this comes just a few days after, or a few, or I believe, yeah, that's a, yeah, a few days after Tony Khan went on the Ritz Eisen podcast and was discussing Brian Danielson specifically, and said that. He 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 said he expects Brian to be with the company past his uh, you know retirement date, his end of his in ring career, whatever we want to call that. He expects Brian to remain in AEW for a very long time. Brian has said before that while he is not going to call the end of this run a retirement, he and Bree did agree that when he signed with AEW, this contract right here would be his final full time deal with a wrestling company and he has mentioned that while his full-time career would be over he would still wrestle a couple of times a year big matches big programs and just generally things that he would want to do for fun there's this misconception out there that Brian Danielson is someone who is motivated by money or you know like a WWE's gonna offer him like whatever right I think that part of of the calculus here for Brian is you know he doesn't necessarily want to like, you know, do these feuds or do these matches to make money. I think the real motivation is for professional wrestling. I don't think there's anyone in the world who loves pro wrestling more than the American Dragon Brian Danielson. That is just fact, right? You look at or listen to the way he talks about wrestling, listen to the way he he shares his perspective about wrestling, listen to the way he talks about his motivations. They are more so about making sure that he wrestles fun, exciting, and ex for him, at least, exhilarating matches. And that means a lot of things. That means a lot of styles. That means a whole host of different affairs. But that is what motivates him. And I think he's someone who's made a whole lot of money in his career. He is nearing his mid-40s. He has a lot of mileage on him, even with the years off. But... He's also, like, you know, the best wrestler of a generation. So, for any company, you would want to have that. And if you're AEW, you know, you have him in the main event. A lot of people, myself included, believe that Brian will indeed win the AEW World Championship. They, there's no surprise in that, you know, 
they wrestle at All Out next week, or sorry, two weeks after that. Then the next big pay-per-view after that is in Tacoma, Washington, just about an hour away from Seattle, a little bit of, of an hour away from uh, Brian's hometown of Aberdeen, Washington. So there's definitely going to be the you know expectation, I think, uh, from a lot of people that, look, the Brian's full-time run could go all the way into Wrestle Dream. And I think part of that is this main event with Swerve Strickland. The match, again, I believe he's going to win. But it is interesting to note that, you know, according to this FightfulSelect.com report, Brian's dealing with legitimate injuries. And, you know, they, they play this very well into the story. Brian has been wearing athletic tape, or sorry, uh, yeah, like uh, athletic tape, injury tape on his shoulders, on his arms. Like, he is beat up, and he's taken a lot of, of, of bad bumps and, and just gotten nicked and gotten injured a lot over the past few years in AEW. And, you know, he's been out with that orbital bone injury. He's been out with a concussion issue that, you know, at one point we didn't know if we were even going to see the American Dragon again. Yet here we are. It looks like this is going to be his final run. And it looks like it's going to be a culmination of a lot of things that his, his you know, first victory of a title in AEW. And if that is the case, you want him to be there. I truly believe that Brian will be there. It looks like the plan from AEW is that he will be there. And for all you people who are saying, like, oh, my God, it's, it's over. They're, they're going to switch it up. As of right now, that does not seem to be the case. I hope it's not the case because I think if you're like me, one of the big reasons you're going to All In is so you can see Brian do it in person and like Brian's going to win the big one. That's the, at least the idea. We'll see what happens. Uh, one thing for sure though is AEW is going to do everything in their power to ensure that that match happens and that match happens in the main event of All In. That's what you're building towards. That's what you have promised. That is what they're going to deliver. There is no way, shape, or form that if going into the Owen Hart Cup final, they knew or felt that Brian would not be able to perform or would not be able to go out there at All In and go into the main event they would not have had him win that. There is no, I, there's no doubt in my mind that they would have him, you know, lose that final to Hangman Page because then you had the built-in storyline of Swerve and Hangman. There's no reason to force the issue with Brian if he was not going to be healthy. So that's where we are. That's where we're where we've been, and here's where we're going. I'm trying to adjust after a quick vacation. So apologies if I'm not as sharp as I've been over the past uh, few weeks, but. We also have a massive AEW return update. This is a bit of a spoiler warning. So for those of you who do not want to be spoiled on specifically ROH stuff, please, please, please continue watching this video because spoilers are good for me. And, and I want you guys to be watching as soon as possible. But obviously, if you want to avoid spoilers, this is your warning. Avoid it now. All right, so let's talk about our next and final topic, the return of one Sammy, Sammy, Sammy Guevara. Let's talk about it. So there have been multiple reports from those who were in the building for Collision and the tapings for AEW and ROH that Sammy Guevara made his Ring of Honor debut is it his debut? Probably his debut. <laughs> but he returned to AEW, ROH, whatever you want to call it, during Sunday's ROH tapings in Arlington. Those, of course, were indeed at the esports complex there where they're also taping Collision. They're having separate Ring of Honor tapings that are on separate days from Collision. But he was there. He made his return by attacking members of the Dark Order and making a save for uh, Dustin Rhodes. This comes off the heels of Guevara being suspended back in February for an incident involving Jeff Hardy where the match probably should have been stopped. It was not, and Guevara kept going, and there were these are obviously other incidences as well, but he was suspended uh, for that. He, he was not seen on AEW TV. It was reported back in May that he was no longer suspended, but he is back, and it is interesting that it is in, of all places, Ring of Honor. Uh, Ring of Honor, you know, a couple of years ago, right? Like, like it, it is not the same as it was a couple of years ago. And, and it's a very, in a very weird place, right? In many ways, Ring of Honor is bigger because of, of AEW and, and the association with AEW. Like, they're selling more pay-per-views than they've ever sold. 
They are, you know, uh, just uh, more profitable than they ever were. And at the same time, somehow, amongst wrestling fans, it, it's just not the same. It, it doesn't have the same feeling. It doesn't feel as as special as, as Ring of Honor once did back in e, just in the pre AEW days, or even during the pandemic era before AEW purchased Ring of Honor. It, that company had a very different vibe and, and feel about it because it felt like a true independent. Now it just feels like, and it is, developmental for all elite wrestling. And it's a bit chaotic with how it's developmental because there's really no split. There's really no no hard line between who's on the main roster, who's on a Ring of Honor outside of maybe the champions, even with the champions. Like Mark Briscoe, he, he's on AEW TV all the time. He was on Blood and Guts. So... It is interesting that this was where they chose him to return. Now, there is a world where I think you can tell the story of Sammy Guevara after all of the turbulence and turmoil, having time in ROH to be the guy. I, like, I think the story would be to have Sammy be the king of ROH. Be, like, run that thing. Run that ship. Be the world champion. And then I think that... A very interesting thing you could do is have him come back eventually after a couple of months to AEW main roster and run and like introduce a character that is just special and, and new and like something we haven't seen because largely Guevara has just been the goofy sidekick of Chris Jericho in AEW. That, that's what he's been outside of the time he beat Miro for the TNT championship. He has not felt special. And even after that run, like, it was just, like, it was, he beat Miro, and then he was Cody's last match. That few months there, those were amazing. And then it was just, went right back to, I'm Chris Jericho's sidekick again. So, they need to avoid that. And I think one of the ways to do it is just have him tell focused stories in Ring of Honor. You could have him come up and do something special even with, with, like, turning the ROH world title. Like, if you really want to make this, like, a developmental deal and, and a stepping stone for talent turning the ROH world championship into a true stepping stone and saying that whoever holds the ROH world title let's say going into dynasty or going into a, insert pay-per-view name here outside of all in obviously whoever holds the ROH world championship at that point gets to cash it in for a world title match an AEW world title match that's something extremely special that you can use to to even elevate the developmental nature of our of ROH and elevate the ROH World Championship because then it's not only going to be like oh my god I get to or I'm competing for this title so I can like you know be the champion I'm competing for this title so I can get the spot at the main roster like there, there's even more added value to that and I think that Sammy could be the guy to do that and look. We have been waiting to see what would the the you know big main event level run for Sammy B. This could be it. This could be it. Again, a lot of wishful thinking on my part. Of course, we will see what happens. But if the goal here is to tell more focused stories with Sammy and build out this character in ROH, I think there's a better chance of doing that there than there is at this point in our in AEW main roster. Excuse me. So. We'll see what happens. Um, obviously, I want to hear from you guys. What do you guys think about Sammy's return? Should he have returned to AEW main roster and just like won the TNT title, won the world title, whatever? I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, or is this a good thing? I want to hear from y'all. Let me know. Also, if you haven't already done so, do me a massive favor. Smash that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get, uh, so you get notified. There we go. So you get notified whenever a new video is released. Until next time, I'm Omri Q for Real Take Wrestling. Be happy, be healthy, and as always, keep it real.